In this problem, I have a beam of length 4A loaded by a concentrated force on the left, a couple, and a uniformly distributed load. My task is to construct the shear force and bending moment diagrams, and I will pursue this task by using the equilibrium equations tying together the shear force, the bending moment, and the applied loads. As usual, I begin this analysis by calculating the reaction forces. Again, as usual, we set the horizontal force equal to zero, so we have two equilibrium equations to determine the reactions at B and D. Now, the free body diagram for the entire beam or the free body diagram involving all external forces is shown here, and I identify three segments. From A to B, from B to C, and from C to D. This will be the same segments if I decided to make cuts, but here I'm not going to use cuts. I will use the equilibrium equations. So the equilibrium equations or equilibrium relationships are divided into two groups. First group involves either unloaded beam or beam loaded by a load Q of X. And in this case, the relationship is between the derivatives of M and V and the distributed load. In particular, if Q is constant, this relationship applies at M is quadratic and V is linear. If Q is equal to zero, M is linear and V is constant. The other class of equilibrium relationships involves the jumps and they are applicable to situations when we have concentrated forces and couples. In the first case, we have a jump in the shear force and no jump in the bending moment. In the second case, we have no jump in V and there is a jump in the bending moment. Using these relationships, I will proceed with segment AB. I will start on the left and I observe that according to my sign convention, there is a negative shear force. The magnitude of this force is 2WA, and this segment is unloaded, therefore the force is constant, and minus 2WA persists through the entire length of the segment. For the bending moment diagram, I start with zero, simply because there are no couples applied on the left. And then I proceed with the slope minus 2WA over the length A. It gives me the value for the bending moment minus 2WA squared. Next, I proceed to the segment BC. So I inherit these diagrams from the previous segment. Now, if I go through this point and I observe that the force 3WA up will produce a jump equal to 3WA so that the shear force diagram arrives at WA. Similarly, the couple W A squared will produce a jump equal to W A squared and therefore I start on the left of this segment from minus W A squared. The segment is not loaded, therefore I have a constant force W A and the slope is equal to minus 
the slope is equal to w a so that as a result we arrive at zero at the right point of this segment or at the point C. Next, the last segment. So I start with WA. There are no jumps at this point. There are no concentrated forces. So I start with WA and I proceed with the slope minus W for the length of 2A. The total loss is minus 2WA, therefore I arrive at the force minus WA. Please note that this force is consistent with the value of the reaction force on the right. For the moment, I need to determine the parabola. And this parabola starts at zero. And then it proceeds with a positive but decreasing slope. So you can see the slope gets smaller and smaller. Then it becomes equal to zero in the middle of the span. And then the slope proceeds in reverse. So it arrives back to zero. The value of WA squared over 2 could be calculated as the area of this triangle, which is, of course, WA times A, and this gives me WA squared over 2. Let me now summarize my results, and uh, it's self-explanatory again it is very comforting that the force on the right the reaction force is consistent with the value of the shear force on the right and the absence of any couples on the right is consistent with the fact that the bending moment diagram on the right is equal to zero.